hold you long, but I'm gonna try to be strong. Uh, if you would just turn with me, don't go. Let, let's just go. Uh, I, I want to pull a couple of scriptures together in my spirit um, and be blessed. Matthew nine, uh, Matthew nine and verse twenty nine has in the B clause of this a verse uh, a phrase that I want to hinge my hat or hold my hat. Matthew 9, 20, and I read it for you. It says, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith. Would you help me preach this to somebody? Look at somebody near you and just say, according to your faith, be it unto you. I want to talk tonight, uh, continuing the theme of my, uh, those members of my church that are here, y'all bear with me. I'm going to try to make it at least a little different, so uh, it, 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 it will sound different, but uh, and there are some elements of it that will be different, um, uh, but the general theme that I have been staying in is this faith theme. Now, how God deals with me, he'll give me a message that is unique to our church, but he'll give me a message that is universal to the body of Christ. And I want to preach a universal message to the body of Christ. That when I walk and you walk out of here tonight, you're going to move to another dimension in your faith. Uh, and it's the works dimension that you're going to move to. See, faith without works is dead. So I'm going to move you in the dimension of your faith that's going to cause an increase in works. Uh, and when that increase in works occurs, it's going to give you a sense of where your faith is now. Father, we want to thank you for your word. It's a lamp onto our feet and our light onto our pathway. Utilize your word tonight, God, for the next 20 minutes and bless your people. Move them to the dimension you want them to be. We say thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Amen. amen and amen. According to your faith, be it unto you. Uh, there are many different description of faith and uh, faith for some people uh, is simple just hoping for the best uh, but the reality is faith that is described as hoping for the best is no more than optimism mm -hmm. uh, you know, faith sometimes is described as just following a positive hunch something in your Noah that says it's going to be all right. Uh, but if it comes from your Noah inside of you, your knowing, uh, then that's humanism. Because mm -hmm. it's not necessarily coming from God. It may be coming from a hunch inside of you. Other folks uh, justify faith and say, it, I've got a feeling. And when you spiritualize it by putting it in songs, I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Uh, but I've had those feelings before, and it wasn't all right. So sometimes that is spiritualism, but not necessarily faith. Mm -hmm. uh, then some folks come along and say, well, it's in positive thinking. No matter what negative experience I have, if I can think my way through it then and put a positive spin, then I can have a positive outcome. And I agree that we ought to be positive in yeah, negative yeah, experience. Yeah experience it but sometimes that's escapism mm -hmm. yeah. in other words we're avoiding reality yeah. mm -hmm. and sometimes the church in an attempt to be spiritual and faith bound we avoid reality I want to teach you tonight through faith uh, how to use the weapon of faith to move yourself in spite of your reality and the Bible declares in this book of Matthew, it's been read right in, that Jesus says, Be it unto you according to your faith. In other words, the writer then is beginning to suggest that uh, in, 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 in get the, the things you will experience in your life is subject to your faith. Mm -hmm. In other words, faith has the ability to move you and cause you to realize some things in your life that you're not going to get if you don't have faith. Jesus comes on the scene uh, and says it this way, Brother Bigelow. He, 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 he puts it, he says, according to your faith, be it unto you, which means if I don't like some of the things that I'm seeing in my life, then begin to check 
my face. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of complaining, instead of saying uh, and blaming other folk for where I am and what is going on, then I need to check my faith to be sure that what I am seeing is not a true measure of my faith. See, faith is not in the, just the song. It's not in the song you sing. It's not in the dance you dance. Uh, um, but the Bible declares in Hebrew, it gives us a description of faith, not necessarily a definition, but a description of faith. It says, now faith is the substance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That now faith is the substance. It suggests, amen, praise God, uh, uh, that, 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 that faith, uh, amen, praise God, which comes from the Greek word pistis, which comes from the root word pistil. Uh, pistil means keep on believing. Mm -hmm. yeah. In other words, faith is not just a momentary thing that I feel when I'm in church. Mm -hmm. It is not the high of the anointing that makes me say I have faith. But faith actually is demonstrated when I get from under the anointing what am I thinking and willing to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere. Just give me a few minutes to build on this. So faith then in this relationship with God, uh, faith is the pistil in its root form, which means a continuous state of believing. It means that I may start out at elementary faith, but at some point I've got to work on my faith. And so I can't get faith because I'm married to somebody of faith. If that's true, check as Sarah. She will tell you she had moments where her faith failed her and it was visible to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, though she was married to the man who's the father of faith. And so you can't just marry into faith. You've got to build your your faith for yourself. I wish I had a church in here because I'm going to go somewhere after a while. Uh, um, the truth of the matter, I have found, maybe not your experience, amen, that when I'm trying to build my faith, I can't measure my faith based on those who are around me. <laughs> because everybody, Minister Toms, is not at the same place of faith. I'm going to make you work hard, Mr. Video Man. Everybody's not at the same place. And so sometimes we try to measure our faith based on those who are around us, but the world words they are speaking are actual doubt to our faith. Yeah. Uh, ask the brothers that were in the boat with Peter with a moment of decision to step out and step on water. Amen. I guarantee you the disciples are saying, we've never seen it done. It can't be done. It's humanly impossible. But you need somebody who have like faith to say, even if it's never been done, you can do it. I wish I had a church here. Jesus says, be it unto you according to your faith. Now, faith is interesting because faith can be built. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go from one level to the next level to the next level. And I believe that in church, somewhere in worship and somewhere in dance and somewhere in song, God is looking for me to consciously start building my faith. Uh, he, he is not despising uh, or, or somehow denouncing the problems I am facing. He is saying that if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can say to your mountain of problem, be thou removed and be cast in the sea. Be unto you according to your faith. Can you touch somebody and say, be unto you according to your faith. Come on, don't be scared of them. They came to church like you came to church. Mm, so somewhere in the worship, the objective cannot just be to get in his presence. I know church is about building an atmosphere of presence, but that cannot just be the objective. Because the Bible tells me when I search it real good, that even the devil is summoned to the presence of God. Y'all remember the meeting that God had and the devil was present and said, mm -hmm, can you, amen, what about Joe? Can I somebody here? So it cannot just be in the presence. It's got to be a greater good because the Bible did not say being in his presence shall please him. It says without faith it is impossible to please him. Touch your neighbor say, you got to build your faith. I know this is elementary and Sunday school, but maybe we have passed and gone on to deep things but have not mastered the simple things. I wish I had the church in here. If you can't say amen, say ouch, it's still true. Mm, so faith is critical. The Bible declare you can't come to God without faith. For he that cometh to him must first believe. 
believe mm, that he is uh, God. And that's a whole message by himself because not everybody believes that he is the same way. Uh, some people think he can do this when he can't do that. Uh, he's the big man upstairs, but he is not visible in my life. Uh, but I've got news for you that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, so my faith uh, should be pushing me to seek him. Uh, my faith should be asking for a greater encounter with him. Uh, I should be saying, God, this is good in my life, uh, but I need an encounter uh, that will let people know unquestionable God is on my side. Uh, I wish I had a church here. I'm going somewhere. You say to me. This is just my introduction. So faith then is critical component in every believer's life and cannot be measured by those who are around you. You can't look at their life and say, well, since they only have mediocre faith, it's okay for me to be where I am. No, you've got to encounter God for yourself. If he is a healer like the preacher just said, then when I am sick, I need the kind of faith that's going to believe God for my sin. I feel God moving already. Mm, God. And the God I serve will set you up and put you in circumstances that will cause your faith to come alive. Mm, I feel God already. I'm going to preach my way through this. Mm, so faith does not deny my problems. Faith does not deny the difficulty and the challenge. Faith just simply say, in spite of what I am facing, I still believe God. Can I come here three people boys? Help me preach this. They were here, they would say, yes, even when we were going down in the fiery furnace, we had one thing act of faith, I still believe God. God don't take us out, he's able to keep us in the middle of the fire. Tell somebody next to he's able, I tell you, to do ex and abundantly beyond that which you are able to ask or think. Faith uh, must have its perfect work. Faith must have its work in every believer's life. Now watch this. No matter who you are and where you are, uh, preachers can't have faith and congregation don't. Faith must be demonstrative. The James picks up here and said, without uh, that uh, faith without works is dead. So you've got one category of faith called dead faith. James admit that some folk have faith, but they have no corresponding action. And as a result, they might as well have dead faith. But what God is moving for is demonstrative faith. Faith that says, I not only believe God, but I am willing to step out of the boat of my circumstance and stand on nothing and say, oh God, if that is you, then speak to my circumstance. Ah, ah, God, can you help me preach to your neighbor? Because they didn't just come to have church. They came for a faith experience. Touch your neighbor and say, God is going to speak to your circumstance before this night is over. You just got to let it in, let it in, let it in, in. Open that closed door that doubt and life experiences has created. God, help me, Holy Ghost. We will let God in the dance and let him in the shout. But when it comes on to the heart, issues of our life. We've got a doubt demon standing at the door. Ah, you were late coming in. Can I preach this thing? I know you were listening to. Watch this. I'm going somewhere. You just hang with me for about 10, 15 more minutes. I'm done. Mm, I have found out that faith can qualify me for the blessing. But unless I am willing to kick out doubt, to rebuke doubt, and rebuke doubters, even though I qualify for the blessing, I may not see the manifestation. Can I prove it here? Jesus shows up at the girl's house. Mm, God. And when he got there, there is doubters in the room. And he says, this kind of miracle cannot have doubters in the mix. Touch your neighbor and say, are you a doubter? Because I will switch roles right now. I will change my seat. This guy ain't a miracle. It's going to take a faith work. God, help me, Holy Ghost. I can't afford to have doubters. 
dollars when I need a hard thing from the Lord? Anybody need a hard thing? Raise both your hands, Lord. Uh, while they're raising both your hands, look at them and say, according to your faith, be it on to you. I want to preach. Can I preach? I feel like preaching. Now, faith then, God, works in accordance to the things that are in my life. In other words, there's a relationship between faith and the results in my life. Hear me, somebody. If I'm not getting good results, then I need to check my faith. Lord have mercy. Now faith works in my salvation. It works in my sanctification. But it also works in my separation. Sometimes, in order to get where God is trying to take you, you got to put on an Abraham anointing and say, get thee out of there. I feel the Holy Ghost. You got to tell the world, listen here, I'm gone. Tell your prayer partner, they hold you back, I'm out of here. Tell your pew friends, I'm getting up from this pew. Because what I need from God, sometimes I've got to do what I've not done in order to get what I have not done. I cannot be satisfied with mediocrity when my God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond that which I'm able to ask. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Faith, oh uh, God, that's my introduction. Faith uh, has a root. And the Bible said, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Green, I didn't always understand that. But now it makes sense. Because before I came to church, I read the same Bible. None of it made sense. But the minute I got rid of doubt in my salvation faith, all of a sudden, everything off of the pages means something to me. My eyes are open. And I put on my faith lens. And I began to believe in a God I can't see. Begin to believe in a Calvary I was not at. Begin to believe in a resurrection I never witnessed. Oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, watch this and stay with me. Faith then has a root. You've got to have faith based on a word from the Lord. Now sometimes that's the Logos. And sometimes it's a rhema. Ask Paul. He's traveling with everybody. But only he hears what God is saying. What God has said only affects him. Sometimes God in order to move you will speak directly to you in the middle of a crowd. I wish I had some church folk in here. Everybody hears the same message, but you get a word out of the message that nobody else on your road got. Talk about it. I to move my faith to a whole nother dimension. I don't just want to be a church person who comes to church, sing three songs, read one scripture, and then go home and say we had church. No, I want to be the church. I want to be the 67 book. My God, the one that doesn't have to be written. The one that's read by human hands and human life and human experience. Stay with me, I got 10 more minutes, I'll let you go home. Can I preach? I got 10 minutes, thank you. Well, mm, faith then, mm, it says be it unto you according to your faith. Then my Bible declares, if faith is not just a one-time experience, but it is a continuous experience in God. In other words, God continues to do things in my life to allow me to move from faith to faith. Oh, God have mercy. So God is in the business then of evaluating my faith experiences. He is in the business of setting me up where the next victory 
victory is going to require a different level of faith. Some of y'all like being left back. Some of y'all like repeating the class because you know the answers. Well, when God tests you, he gives you an open book test, but it's still a test. God have mercy. I hate it when teachers give open book tests because it means the answer. Though it's in the book, you will have to know the book in order to have the answer. Yes, yes. He gives an open book test. Lord have mercy. And allows you to find the answer. The thing I learned about faith is he will keep you where you are until you have found the answer to go to the next level. Touch your name and say, I'm graduating today. I'm going to the next level. I refuse to make less than my privilege. What separates one person from another person is simply their faith. God help me, Holy Ghost. What brings healing to one body but leaves another person sick is simply their faith. I come by to tell you, if you don't like where you at, according to your faith, be it. you some instructions because if I leave you at inspiration you will go out and says I'm ready but what should I do I'm going to tell you the Bible declares faith it says now faith is the substance mm, go. now notice this description starts with now can I preach here for a minute here oh God mm, it could have said then faith is because it's really continuous and us statement from the previous chapter. It could have said then faith and that would be a good transition. But it declares now faith. It suggests that there are faith deals with future things. And faith always deals with what's the blessing and promises tied to your future. What the text is suggesting between now and your future, you need a faith bridge that you can cross and bring what is in your future into your present. I wish I had somebody in here. I preached on Sunday this segment that God is in the business. My Bible says like my granduncle used to work in the steel workers union. He helped build and maintain bridges like the Walt Whitman. He said before they lay it out, somebody goes into the room called an engineer and works out the stress and the strain how many car loads of folks it's going to have to be able to bear up under before it breaks in advance determined the breaking point and they turn determine the atmospheric pressure that's going to heat up the metal that is contained in the bridge my bible says God Lord have mercy has gone into the, his experimental room and declared your breaking points in advance. Uh, and in every test, uh, in every trial, uh, he provides a way up. So if I think the pressure is too great, if I think the problems are too heavy, if I think the burden is unmovable, then look for one of two things. Look for the exit or decide God has already determined I can take this, I can handle this, I'm going to be alright. Touch three people and tell them I'm going to be alright. because God has already determined the breaking point and not had promised he will not give me more than I can handle. Faith is the bridge between my now reality and my future expectation. Mm -hmm. Faith is the expectation in spite of my reality. Church, my friend, cannot just be a routine. Mm -hmm. For church to be real, I have to come to 
in every service expecting God to do something he hasn't done in the previous. I wish I had a real church in here. I gotta come and somewhere in my seat when I worship and praise, I'm gonna put up the scripture and say, God, I need you to come to my house. And before I get there, deal with that demon I just left there. I wish I had some folk that need God to show up and rebuke some demons. Oh, get me, Holy Ghost. I need a sick person in the room to say, you know what? I qualify for a healing. And this is the service that my healing is going to happen. Can I preach to somebody in here? Ah, oh, God. Pastor, I, I'm a conservative person by nature, as hard as it is to believe, because I preach like a crazy man. I, I'm concerned. I met a young a man who was a pastor who told me he had a healing school. And he told me that he taught healing in the school. And I said, well, healing is a gift. Mm -hmm. oh, God, and so how, how can you teach it? He explained to me what I am teaching folk is not to heal if they don't have gifts. But I am teaching folk how to believe when there is a gift. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can I preach to somebody in here? He says the first thing I teach them is that if healing is going to happen, we need corporate faith in the room. We need everybody believing for somebody that God can heal anybody. I wish I had a church in here. Because if everybody in this room believes that everybody in this room is going to come out healed at whatsoever diseases ail them before this night is over, Can I preach to somebody in here? Y'all looking at me funny. Mm -hmm. And I'm much taller than him. Oh, you see, you've got to understand. I'm preaching today, but I wasn't born a preacher. I'm the first generation preacher. It means I got saved and God made me a preacher. My whole family were heathens. Now, in order for God to reach me, he had to heal my brother from terminal cancer. When the doctor said he's done, take his voice, he's out of here. God said, no, no, no. We went to a church on a midweek night. God thank him all in week services. Mm, the rest of the, the Sunday go to meeting folks stayed home. But there were a few folk in prayer. And when prayer was done, we waited and it was Bible study. And we were wondering because we were heathens, when is the time where the, we can get some prayer? You know when you're unsaved, all you want is a prayer. And we waited through Bible study. And when Bible study was over, the person who brought us to church says come this is your moment well we went up by faith brought my terminal brother and stood him before the preacher and said we need you to pray for this sickness but my bible said let them that are sick call for the illness of the church and let them pray The story is, the preacher laid hand on my terminally ill brother, and as he was going down, he stopped, looked at us, and says, do you believe God? We looked at each other, didn't know what he was doing, but he was using a principle of faith. He says, it don't matter how much I pray, if you don't believe, your brother's going to die in this sickness. We looked at each other, and said, we don't have a choice, but believe God. Some of you are here because you are inspired to God. We came out of desperation. I'm desperate for Him. I'm desperate for His presence. I'm desperate for His glory. I'm desperate for miracles back in the church. Then he laid hands on my sick brother and prayed the prayer of faith. And when he got done, we started looking for evidence. Mm, the sister that brought us to church says, don't worry. If you believe, be it unto you according to your faith. My problem with my brother did not disappear instantaneously. So we took him back home and they gave us some instructions with olive oil and prayer. And every night we olive oil the cancer afflicted area and we pray as a family. And I want to tell you within seven days, God, the hand of God visited my brother's sick cancer terminal ill body 
and release him from every cancer cell in his body. I wish I had a let somebody know they be it on to you. Seven days, my brother was healed. Seven has got a perfect number. On the eighth day, we couldn't tell. He, he was so twisted in his lymph gland that his head was twisted, so when he walked, it was obvious. Within seven days, we saw the head straighten up. The color come back to his body. And then he started to say crazy things like, Daddy, when I was in the womb, uh, an angel visit me. Kids, kids don't talk like that. And told me it's going to be all right. Let me tell you something. God is out to move your faith. He will do ridiculous things to set you up for a faith moment. I got to close this now. I've used too much of your time already. I gotta go back to my seat. But I'm praying and I'm releasing an anointing of faith in this room that's gonna attack every area of doubt that has been plaguing me and you. He come out about every worrisome spirit you walked up in here with. I just demanded in the name of Jesus that that spirit take to off of you. I'm releasing I'm releasing you from worry. I am releasing you from fretting. I am releasing you from trying to figure out how it's going to work out. I am releasing you from family issues. I said I'm releasing you. I am planting faith everywhere doubt exists. Before this night is over, five of you will get a turnaround. You decide who that five is. To your faith, be it unto Somebody just praise God in the moment. If you need to go in and stop playing, stop playing and go in. Because when this night is over, five folks are getting a turn around. He comes out of those shot. I just got a download in my spirit. And I believe in God for five folks. He comes out of the that need a miracle.
and nobody else move. If you didn't move a while ago, don't move again. Don't move now. Don't move now. Don't move now. If you didn't move when I said it, don't move now. You come to Abu Hallelujah. God, I release you. I'll do your best work. Be it to Abosha. Create the visitation she needs in her spirit for the miracle that must be visible in her life. Elevate her faith. You can bring her to a now season. A now season. Now, God, I can't wait another moment. Now, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come in agreement with her anointing, God. I call her to her faith. you to praise him for three minutes. Just so say thank you as if you already believe that that which you prayed for is already done. Come on, shut. I just want you to come on, shut. interrupt your thanksgiving because now you're going to be a blessing to somebody else. What is it you're believing God? I don't want you to hear your personal stuff. I just want to know what, in general, what is it? Is it at home? Is it, what is it? Just to please. What is it you are believing God for? Amen. What is it you're believing God for? Healing on my back. Hey, 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 hey. Everybody that's in this line that is believing God for healing, raise your hand. If it's healing for your body, you got into this line because you're believing Him for healing. All right, watch this. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be it unto you also. I call unto the anointing. Be it unto you. I call unto the anointing. Be it Is a barrier. 
I was preaching, but there's just so much going on in your world. Kinda, like, almost like your body was here, but your mind is under invasion and attack. Your peace had long left it. I release the stronghold. I call the strong man off his assignment. There was nothing physical that suggested the breakthrough had already happened, uh, but within seven days, uh, a miracle showed up in my house. Anybody else in this line that was believing God for grandchildren or children, raise your hand. And that's why you got into this line, all right? I'm going to lay hands on her and everybody that needs the same thing she needs. Regardless of where you're standing in this building, you've got to believe God for the anointing that's getting ready to release. And Jesus, the man said, God, you don't have to come to my house, so would you just speak the word? Speak the word of every demonic assignment will get called out for my daughter. Every demonic assignment will get released. That's how it's shot. I call every demonic force. I call you out by name. I attack you. I attack you for attacking this family. This is a matriarch of the anointing. This is a keeper of the flame. Yes, God, I release I release it in your house. I release it in your house. I release it. Hey! that have been passed through the bloodline. And now in the name of Jesus, I lift an anointing against you. Demon from hell, I speak against you. The blood of Jesus against you. The power of the Holy Ghost. Lift up a standard in her family tree. Hallelujah. Not only the grandson, but the daughter. He come down the most sick here. God, the rest of the family, while you're touching that one too. In the name of Jesus, somebody just praise God for a minute. I know you're getting tired, but can you just praise God? Because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy always to be praised. All right, who else is left that came in the line for something different other than what's been mentioned? Yes, sir. Stay right where you are. Lord, you said in your word that your spirit will be a mind regulator. Stresses. Work stresses and all the family stresses. God, in the Jesus, I release the anointing to release him. Strong holy off of him now in the name of Deliver him, Lord God. Deliver him. He comes out of Osha. Deliver him from what he's doing in the family tree. Deliver him. I pray this deliverance anointed over his mind. He will no longer have to shout over it and dance over it. He will no longer have to pretend it's not there. I call it out for sight. Praise God. Give God some glory in this room. A month and a half ago. I already believe that I know that the work is 
Anybody else believe in God for folk situations? Just raise your hand. I need you to come in agreement with her because as you praise God for her, for God is going to make happen for you. I tap into the anointing. You cut that out. Father God. I tap into the anointing that's on her, God. That is for her brother. That portion of anointing that's not for her but belongs to him. That as she lays hands on him and reads scriptures over him, what should have been a dehabilitating sickness will begin an instantaneous turnaround. God, I reverse the curse that stroke has come. Now a double portion according to your faith. Come on, somebody praise God. I'm, 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 I'm done. My anointing has lifted. And, and when the anointing has lifted, I've got good sense. I, I, I stop. I stop when the anointing has lifted. Listen. Somebody just give God a praise as if you believe God is going to do and has already done just what he said. Listen, I can't help it if there are a few of you that says, I don't know, I don't believe all that. You, you don't have to believe it. I'm the one that was in the family with the brother that had terminal cancer that doctors had turned over. I believe God's a healer. And nobody can convince me otherwise because I've seen the miracle moving hand of God. I've seen it for myself. You can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> you can't tell me he's not a deliverer. You can't give, tell me he will not give you your peace and your mind back. He will give you everything the devil stole from you and give you double for your trouble. And in this season, there is such an attack on the mind of people of God that you will be in church and your mind be out of church.